For all of you tuned in around the world, welcome to Monster Jam Live as we are coming to you from U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, home of the Minnesota Vikings and home of Super Bowl 52. But tonight, tonight is all about Monster Jam. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Kraft, where the track is ready and the stage is set here in Minneapolis where it's unseasonably warm in the low 40s, which makes for a perfect night. But things are about to really heat up as 14 of the best of the best are preparing to attack the track tonight in hopes of capturing those critical points to become the overall series champion, which we'll announce later on in the tour as the road to the Monster Jam World Finals 18 continues. In this broadcast, we'll preview the action set for tonight. We'll also let you hear directly from some of the biggest superstar drivers in all of Monster Jam. Now, for all of you sitting in the stands here at U.S. Bank Stadium, you can follow along on Facebook at facebook.com slash Monster Jam. Now, to get things started, let's head back to the pits where Janelle Marie gets us ready for tonight's incredible action. That's right, Monster Jam fans. We are getting ready down here with all the crew chiefs working very hard to get this show started. I am here with uh, Raminator's crew chief, Tim Hall. Tell me, what are the things that, as a crew chief, you would look at before the show? Well, we, of course, we want to make sure we got everything right dialed in for the track. We got the right gear ratio. We have to make sure we got the right tire pressure, make sure the shocks are set correctly. And then just as a last minute, make sure the batteries are up, all the you know, the little things that you don't want to go wrong that can bite you, you know, just at the last second. Just put our hands on it one more time, pat it on the on its valve covers and say, all right, you got to take care of me tonight and make sure everything's right. Absolutely. Well, we're going to also get in depth with our drivers now. We know that you're actually... Uh, Mark Hall's brother, it's Tim Tim Hall, Mark Hall, we make that connection. But we're going to get more in depth with our drivers. Actually, Lola is in the stands with Candace Jolly with Monster Mutt Dalmatian. That's right, I'm here with the leader of the Dalmatian Nation, Miss Candace Jolly herself. Now, Minneapolis has been waiting for you to come back with the Monster Mutt. What have you got for us tonight? I'm so excited to be back here in Minneapolis. I believe it was about five years ago. We tore it up here, and we're ready to rock tonight. We are hoping to see some spots fly. In fact, I've been seeing spots all night, and I'm so excited to see you run tonight especially. Now, I have a question. We're all dying to know. All roads lead to Monster Jam World Finals in Vegas. Are we going to have another fashion show this year? I sure hope so. There is nothing closer to my heart than getting to have my Monster Mud Dalmatian fashion show out of the Monster Jam World Finals. And if you guys are planning on going and you want to be part of the action with me, find me on all my social media, Facebook, Instagram. Message me. You can be right there in the action having a great time. That's right. Join the party. Now, one last question for you. I hear you have a quirky, lucky charm. What is it? Ever since I was a little girl, I've always wore crazy colored socks on race day, and it holds true today. I've got my puppy power socks on. <laughs> Puppy power, everybody. Give it up for Candace Jolly, the leader of the Monster Mutt Dalmatian Nation. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? That's right, I'm hanging out here with VP Racing Fuels Mad Scientist Lee O'Donnell. You know, two weeks two racing wins and in order to get into that racing competition you must qualify and you've been one of the top qualifiers you know how important is what do you learn from qualifying rounds well you, you know you never really get to come out here and practice so you get one shot at qualifying and you better nail it down so you'll see some of us kind of cheat a little bit as we're doing our introductions you'll see me testing out the corners in my my vp race and fuels mad scientist and uh you know when you get up there you get one shot that's it. So you better lay your best stuff down and hopefully you're in the top eight. And how important is lane choice in racing? Yeah, well, you won't know until you get that first run under your belt. Um, and it is kind of important. So that's why you always want to run as fast as you can and you can get that, that lane choice. Well, I hope we make that a third win tonight. With 
the man himself, Roger Gowder, driving USA One tonight. It's got to be exciting to be here in front of this great crowd. It is. It's a big arena, man. We're really looking forward to this. We're going to turn this thing loose tonight. Well, you talk about arenas. This is a stadium right here, Roger. Over the last couple of weeks, in fact, years, you've been competing in arenas. So how do you change a truck in order to adjust to a track like this in front of a crowd like this? We've, uh, we've changed the gearing in the truck for one. We've done some fine tuning on the engine and also we've adjusted the shocks for this big stadium show tonight. Now, it's gotta be exciting, we talked about it. It's gotta be exciting being in front of a crowd at this state-of-the-art stadium. I mean, everybody's been talking about this. Are you a little nervous? Not really, this is a beautiful facility, a nice big track. No, it really doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother you at all. Well, you're a pro, you've been a veteran, you've been doing this for a long time. One more time, USA ones. Roger Gallagher, we're gonna see him. Good luck here tonight as we now go to Samson's driver, Rick Steffens. That's right, I am here with Rick Steffen, driver of Samson. You know, most of our fans don't know how much work it takes to work your way up as a crew chief into now driving a monster drink truck. As a former crew chief, you know, give us an idea of what it takes to keep Samson on track. Oh, you just got to put in the hours. I mean, you got to put in the wrench time. Uh, every week we're going over no every nut and bolt in this truck. You know, we're checking everything, going through the fuel system, making sure everything's right, and uh, hopefully get that win the following weekend. You know, it must be an honor to be able to drive Samson as well. Do you take advice from Dan Patrick still? Oh, I take a lot of advice from Dan. You know, he was a phenomenal racer his entire career. He was never one to be. He would never lay down. Um, and uh, he's always in my ear coaching me through things and talking me through corners and just trying to make our racing program better. And uh, hopefully I can pull that off tonight. Once again, give it up for your driver of Samson, Rick Steffens. I'm here with Jim Burns of Mechanical Mischief and some crazy Monster Jam fans. Now, you've been to Minneapolis before, but you certainly haven't been in this stadium before. Tell me, what are you looking forward to tonight? Oh, just even being here in this brand new beautiful facility is awesome. You know, glad they welcomed us back here. You know, after many, many years, I started out here. I think my third show was in this building over 10 years ago. So I've uh, been here many times since, but uh, awesome facility and glad to be back. Now, I, obviously having a special place in your heart, why are you so excited to be here in Minneapolis tonight? Uh, it's just, you know, uh, what, I, what my whole dream was, you know, as a kid was to uh, race monster trucks and like I said earlier, watching them on TV, you know, we get to see a little bit of history here with uh, USA One, that's what I grew up watching on TV, late 80s, early 90s was the old leaf spring trucks going crazy, you know, and uh, just uh, great that the sports advanced to this spot. Well, I was going to ask you who inspired you to get into Monster Jam, but it sounds like we got a little window into that. Who is your inspiration? Um, I guess back then, uh, you know, it, it had to be Gravedigger, I guess, even though, you know, that's everybody's favorite even today. But uh, back then I was just cheering for kind of what I felt was the underdog and Gravedigger, you know, it was always broke. And uh, to see him uh, get it together and make one pass, you knew it was going to be something awesome to see. So that's, uh, that's who I cheered for. Well, we're cheering for you tonight. Give it up for Jim Burns, the Mechanical Mischief. Well, he is the Extreme Diesel, Dave Radzirius. They call you D-Rad for short. I want to know a little bit about you. I know a lot of drivers out here know you, but a lot of the fans might not know you. How would you get started in Monster Jam? You know, it's funny you ask that question, but I, 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 I worked my way up. Um, I, I crewed for some guys. I've been around it a little bit, and I got myself into it, and it took off from there. It sure did. Now, driving Extreme Diesel, it's been an exciting truck. A lot of fans have been talking about Extreme Diesel, and a lot of fans would love to be behind the wheel of a truck like that. What advice would you give folks out there that want to be a part, be a driver, even be part of the crew of Monster Jam? Well, you know, I, was, I, I had this question. It was asked to somebody else on Monster Jam in front of me while I was sitting on my couch. They asked that driver that question. That driver said, whatever you got to do, make it happen 
I turned to my wife and I said, I'm building a monster truck. But what it boils down to is, is what you do out here and do in your life. Do good in school, good friends, quality people around you, listen to your parents, and work hard and make it happen. Follow your dream, and whatever it takes to happen, make it happen. But it all starts very early with going to school, listening to your parents, good friends, all that kind of stuff, and I promise you, you'll end up at the World Finals one day. And that, that has happened to me. I've been there. So it will happen. Great life lesson right there from Extreme Diesel's D-Rad. Hey, good luck tonight, D-Rad. Now let's go down. And I'm going to tell you, I'm excited about this. He is a rookie. It is, of course, the 12-time X Games medalist, Matt Fighton, driving Metal Militia. You know, technically he is a rookie, but you certainly don't drive like one. Matt Byton of Metal Militia, now that you've had a taste of Monster Jam, what's going on? Man, I love Monster Jam. This is awesome. It's a dream come true. I, I got to live an amazing career in freestyle motocross, and to, to be out here again doing a, a second dream come true career, I love it, and I want to get wild. I come from freestyle motocross, so I got a few screws loose. Now, you have an interesting nickname, the B-10 Bomber. Who gave that to you and why? <laughs> it was uh, just some old friends when I first came into freestyle motocross. You know, I'm uh, known as Wild Man, so I think uh, Monster Jam fits me quite well. And uh, I love being out there representing for Meta Militia and uh, terrorizing the fans up and uh, getting rowdy with you all. Now, what should Meta Militia fans do when they see you hit the track? Yeah, you know what I want you guys to do when uh, I hit the track? I just want to hear you guys upstanding, getting as loud as possible, because I'm going to send that sucker, that's for sure. Let's get wild for Matt Militia. You know, as you were walking to the stadium here tonight, or for all of you that are sitting at home, you are probably got predictions in your mind tonight. Who do you think is going to win racing? Who do you think is going to win Monster Jam Freestyle? Well, I'm going to give my predictions until then we're going to go out to the fans and see what they have to say. But my prediction tonight for Monster Jam Racing is going to be... Mark Hall driving a Raminator for a few reasons. 30 years in the industry, 25th year with Monster Jam, as of course it's the 25th anniversary of Monster Jam as well. Currently holds the world record at almost 100 miles an hour in a Monster Jam truck. Not bad at all, and he's currently sitting fourth in the overall standing. So I think it's going to be a Raminator. Now, let's move on over to Freestyle. I said it, and you just saw him and met him, Matt Byton, and driving Metal Militia. I think Matt Byton, he has has what it takes. He's been in front of a lot of people on a big stage, so the nerves aren't there. 12 X Games medals, not bad at all from that young rookie. Again, we'll see him tonight. Again, Matt Biden, I think he's going to take it in freestyle tonight. But what about you? What do you think? What are your predictions? Well, I'm here with some Monster Jam fans tonight, and we are wondering, who do you think is going to win racing tonight? I think, um, yeah, Maximum Destruction. Well, he's not here tonight, but I'm sure he's winning somewhere. And what about you? Who do you think is going to win freestyle tonight? Grave Digger. That's a good guess. But what about these guys behind you? We got Big Kahuna, we got Hurricane Force. Let's see, anybody else got some predictions? Who do you think is going to win tonight? He's speechless, ladies and gentlemen. Who do you think's going to win tonight? I want to hear it. Well, whenever you hear that tone, the bells are ringing. Charlie Pocket driving Grave Digger tonight. Charlie, a lot of fans, of course. No matter where you go around the world, you have a lot of fans. I want to go right to freestyle right now. I know you're a little upset that I didn't choose you to win freestyle, but I want to talk about your strategy. Is it better to go out fast and get those early points, or is it better to kind of spread it out or just hit it hard at the end? 
you know, it, it, it goes either way. You know, it, it's, it's cool to go out first because you can actually lay down a great run. It's like you've got nothing to go off of, so it's, everything's brand new. That's what's cool. Going out last, though, you get to see what everybody else does and goes, oh, man, that was cool, but, oh, I'm going to one-up them on this. And that's what I like to do. I like to one-up everybody. If I see something cool, the fans are getting into it and they're getting loud, I'm like, all right, that was cool. Now we're going to take it one step further. I like that. So you like to go last. Well, you usually do. I want to talk about now the fans because the fans are what makes Monster Jam so exciting, not just for us as hosts and not for all the fans that are watching, but for the drivers here as well. How important and how inspiring are those fans when you walk into a stadium like this? <laughs> the fans are everything. We had a great pit party earlier, and the fans came up, the kids doing Chucky dance for me. Man, they inspire me. They get me going. And for doing this for how many years I have, it's just an honor to be here in this great facility, new place. Look at this place. This place is huge. It's just very cool to see how far we've come with this sport and how far we're going. State of the art, U.S. Bank Stadium in front of a great crowd, a great city here in Minneapolis. Once again, Charlie Parkin driving Gravedigger. Good luck tonight to you, Charlie. Now let's go down to the big kahuna himself. It's Shane England. That's right, I'm here with my man, the big kahuna, Sean England. And, sir, I have a question. Uh, last week you tore it apart in the wheelies competition. What is the secret to an uh, excellent wheelie? Uh, awesome wheelie is when you can stand it up on the end. And uh, I've always never had a wheelie bar. Well, after last week, we kind of got a good slap wheelie in there, and I hammered on the throttle real hard. It ripped the whole body off. So this week at the shop, we did a bunch of fiberglass, and I built a wheelie bar. So we got to try that out again tonight and see if it works. Well, keeping our eye on you. Now, speaking of keeping our eyes on people, do you keep your eye on any of the competitors while they're racing? Are you watching their moves, setting their moves? Yeah, I mean, I watch the guys. I mean, the fast guys out here is Leo Donald and Charlie Falk, and I mean, everybody knows them. But us independents, man, we like to go big, too. So we, you got to watch everything they do to learn more and more. But the guy that I really keep my eye on, it's Tristan England. That's my son. He's driving the Elder Shaker truck on the East Coast Triple Threat Tour. And so me and him have a lot of rivalry just at home. So we're planning on Vegas. We're going to have a grudge match out there and see if we can settle the egos at our house. Father-son match. I like it because all roads lead to the world finals here in Monster Jam. Now, tell me, what are you looking forward to most tonight, racing or freestyle? I'm a racer. I've raced all my life. I love racing more than anything. But I can tell you what. When you can sky that truck out and get 30 or 40 feet out of it and these fans start cheering, it doesn't matter how much horsepower. When these guys get on their feet and out of the seats, you can hear it in the truck and it makes you want to go bigger and bigger every time. Going big with the big kahuna. Let's give it up for Shane England, everybody. And up next, let's get to know a little bit more about Chad Fortune in Soldier Fortune. Everybody, we got a pair of I got your... Honor, code, loyalty. Are we clear? Representing the armed forces clean? here tonight, it's Chad Fortune. You've been to Minneapolis before, but your truck is new to some Monster Jam fans here. Can you give us a little bit of background? Oh, man, I, let me tell you something. I've been doing this for about 17 years. Had some great trucks in Superman and Captain America. But you know what? I thought it was time to, to start uh, tributing the, the heroes, the real heroes, uh, the men and women that keep us uh, safe, the men and women of our armed forces. Um, that in the families that just let's just come out here and play monster trucks well you're on the road to world finals let us uh, tell these minneapolis fans what they're what they're going to be expecting if they join us well let me tell you this you know what the uh, las vegas is one of the fastest trucks uh, in all of monster jam and when we come out it's going to be super exciting it's high speed, and the biggest and the baddest trucks in the whole country are there. It's going to be big, and it's going to be great. Well, thank you so much for your time. Now, let's get to know Mark Hall, driver of Raminator. With the 
driver, Mark Hall, driving Raminator here tonight. Good to have you here. Good to have you here once again. Want to talk about Monster Jam being a family activity. We always say that for all of you fans that go to a Monster Jam show, you bring the entire family, and it's exciting for us to see you have your family be a part of it. Talk about your brother's role. Well, you know, Tim, uh, he, he, I do all the stuff that people see, but he always does the behind-the-scenes stuff, and he's my crew chief here. And then also when we're at the shop, he kind of runs the day-to-day, -day, the, the, the business side of things. So I, get to, I always tell everybody I get to do the, kind of the fun stuff, and he has to do the work stuff. So, it, yeah, it's, 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 I, I definitely got the better end of the deal. Well, we talked about it a little bit ago that you currently hold the world record at 99.1 miles an hour. I know you want that triple digit, but let's talk about how important speed is as opposed to other elements in racing. Absolutely, you know, uh, you know, we got some long straightaways here, so speed is going to be very important. But obviously, you got to make a good controlled turn because that's uh, you can you can uh, make or break it in the turns there. So you got to you got to get after it, get down there to the turn, make a controlled turn, and then get back after it again. So the turns are uh, are, are are crucial here tonight. So that's going to be where a lot of races are won and lost. Now again, you got to make that choice, like you said, you go wide and try to hammer it into that finish line, or do you try to cut that crash car? But again, if you hit it, you can lose some time. A lot of choice. That's why you're driving. I'm just sitting right here. I wouldn't be able to make that choice. Once again, Mark Hall driving a Raminator. Now let's go to Hurricane Force, Stephen Thompson. Stephen Thompson of the Hurricane Force with me now. You know, here at Monster Jam, we love families. It's kind of a family affair. And uh, you have uh, a brother that's racing in Monster Jam. Is there any rivalry at home? Oh, there's always rivalry between me and the brother. You know, my brother Mike, he drives wrecking crew for uh, Jim Kohler and the racing team up there. Uh, you know, right now they're out there in Anaheim, California. I know he's getting ready to kick some tail out there. But, uh, you know, it's all support. I love my brother. When it's me and him, though, there's no more brotherhood there. There's no more love. It's all down to the racing. Nice. Now, when you are sitting in the seat and that light is about to turn green, what goes through your head? I mean, are you pumped up? Like, what's going on? Oh, absolutely. You know, we hear these crowds out here. We see them cheering. We hear them cheering. We see them out there, you know, waving their flags. It gets us pumped up, you know, but at the same time in a race, and we have to keep calm about it. Uh, we've got to race our own race. You've got to worry about the guy over there, but you still got to be clean about it. Uh, like Mark said, out here, the turns are crucial, very crucial. Uh, so you want to, you want to be uh, fast, but you need to be in control there. And uh, it's just you've got, you got to play your own game, race your own race, and hope for the best. Now, does that uh, rule apply also to freestyle? Are you calm and collected behind the wheel when it comes to freestyle? I try to be. I uh, normally plan out my first three hits, which never works out, and I normally land on my roof somewhere. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's part of the, fan, uh, the show out here. These fans, it's absolutely amazing. These guys come out here, spend their hard-earned money to support what we do. And if honestly, if it wasn't for these guys, we wouldn't be able to do it. So it's all for these fans, and uh, we're trying to put the best show we can tonight. Remember, guys, the louder you are, the higher he goes. Give it up for Stephen Thompson of the Hurricane Force. Up next is Storm Damage, John Killinger. Sat outside my front window, this storm is going somewhere, he's well home and I am hanging on. Well, you saw right there, says Tim Mente. Tim is usually behind the wheel of Storm Damage, but not tonight. It's John Killinger. You've been driving for about 10 years in Monster Jam, but you didn't get started as a driver. You started as a tech. Yeah, I started, you know, I wanted to get into this, and that time it worked out great. I became an official, did it for quite a few years. It was a good time, met a lot of people, and it just worked my way to this. Well, you deserve it. You're one heck of a driver. Let's talk about this summer, because this summer was exciting for you. You got to compete in your hometown of Bangor, Maine. You had a lot of family and friends. That had to have exciting. Let's talk about that. Oh, it's awesome. You know, I've been lucky. I've done it a couple times, and this summer was a real good time. And Steve and I up there, we had a real good time, and couldn't ask for any better you know but it, then again you get out of Bangor and come out to these you know big events like this and this place is awesome and I'm glad to be here this place is awesome US Bank Stadium again we're all excited to be here the nerves are playing a little bit for some of the drivers but again a veteran like this he's ready to just tackle the track hey good luck tonight John now let's talk to Dragons driver Dustin Brown <laughs> That's right, I am here with Dustin Brown, driver of Dragon. You know, Dragon is new for the Minneapolis fans. How was it received during the pit party? You know, the fans here in Minneapolis, they love Dragon. All the kids have asked me about the flamethrower coming out of the front. So when I come out here tonight, I'm going to blow some fire out and ready to burn this track down. 
you know, when you first started competing for Monster Jam, was there a list of cities or places that you wanted to compete at? Yeah, you know, there's a great history right here in Minneapolis. This was a great place. The history of Monster Jam in the Twin Cities. I've always wanted to come here and burn it down. I got my truck. I got my chance tonight. But also to celebrate the history of the 25 years of Monster Jam, we have the original indoor world champion from 1988, Minneapolis's own Everett Jasmer in USA One. Help me welcome him out here tonight. Stand up and salute USA One, America's monster truck, and the most American of sports, the first ever world champion of monster truck racing, featuring founder owner Everett Jasper. Now, won't you please watch with me the red, white, and blue Chevrolet called USA One? Everett, welcome to Monster Jam, buddy. It's an honor to be here with you. You know, you're one of the pioneers of Monster Jam. What are some of your fondest memories from back in the day and winning that first world championship? Well, there's an awful lot of fond memories in almost 40 years since creating this sport, going back to the early days with the first truck. But obviously, 1988, when, you debu when I debuted this truck, I started driving it the first two races. It was my dream come true. I built it for racing, and I found out I wasn't a very good driver anymore. I had too much business on my mind. So I turned the driving over to a young employee named Rod Litzow, and he went out and won that first national championship with this truck. But this truck is still the same truck as it was in 1988, and uh, it's, it's a piece of history. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we, we love having you out here. It's an honor for me to be able to be up here with you. You know, the fans here in Minneapolis, they know the history of Monster Jam. What is some of the, you know, what's it feel like to come out here all these years later in front of all these new fans in this beautiful new building? It's pretty incredible. Obviously, the building is incredible, but being here after almost 29 years of absence from Monster Jam is, a, is an incredible experience. And all these people here, when I debuted this thing in December, it was incredible, and it's incredible again tonight. Thanks to all you Monster Truck fans, especially you USA One fans. Uh, it's an incredible experience. You know, with this being the actual 1988 truck that won the world championship, what do you do with it now? I know you got a big shop here locally. What are you, what are you up to with the truck now? Well, I use this truck almost uh, every week uh, through the summer months, doing exhibition and demonstrations and displays, all types of things. I still, to this day, do exhibition car crushing with this truck. 
Uh, I'm the only one of the founders still driving these things. I guess I'm crazy. I'm not sure. But uh, it is, uh, it's still a great truck for doing exhibitions and displays. I still have the original 1970s at, back on display at the shop up in Ham Lake, Minnesota. Well, Ever, we want to thank you for coming out and enjoying the night with us. Everybody give it up. Ever Jasmer in USA One. Thank you. Thank you. God bless America. to the start of tonight's event. Now, let's take a tour of the competition course and what makes this track so amazing, with, along with some of the amazing superstars in Monster Jam. Welcome, Monster Jam fans. The action starts right here tonight. This is the starting line. This is where qualifying is going to happen. Go down to this first turn. You're going to hit those. But man, the butterfly's got to be gone by that pun. Tell them about racing, Candace. That's right, Lee. Candace Jolly here, driver of Monster Mutt Dalmatian. And it's time for the racing bracket. Only the top eight trucks get to qualify to race, and my puppy and I came here to rock. Watch out, boys. I'm Chad Fortune, driver of Soldier Fortune. If you don't make it into the race bracket, wheelie contest is the name of the game. Bring that giant monster truck on the tail end and ride it as far as you can for the highest score. Hey, Charlie, tell them about freestyle. This is Charlie Pawkin, here to talk to you about freestyle. Hey, there's nothing like coming out here, the adrenaline pumping, watching all the other trucks, man. Oh my gosh, it's the coolest thing in the world. There's nothing like coming out here and making a digger dance. You're all pumped up, watching everybody else. Get big air, donuts, whatever. That's the whole game about it. That's what I love. Who loves freestyle here? There's Minneapolis love freestyle. Let me hear you loud. Well, that is going to do it for us here at Monster Jam Live as we are getting closer to the action here at U.S. Bank Stadium. I want to thank all of you for joining in, and be sure to keep checking in every day on the Monster Jam Facebook pages, Twitter, Instagram, and, of course, YouTube for all the latest news and highlights. And be watching for upcoming editions of Monster Jam Live here at Facebook.com slash Monster Jam. And guess what? We're not done tonight. Here on Facebook, in less than two hours, the Monster Jam Live Facebook page will be live again, this time coming to you all the way from the West Coast in Angel Stadium in Anaheim, California. From all of us here at Monster Jam in Minneapolis at U.S. Bank Stadium, for Lola, Janelle Marie, I'm Jeff Kraft. We'll see you next time.